The BBC presents Tony Hancock with Moira Lister, Bill Kerr and Sidney James in... Hancock's Offer. At some time or other, everybody feels run down. This pace of modern life tells upon us all. As a matter of fact, Tony Hancock hasn't been feeling at all well lately, so much so that only this morning Bill and Moira finally persuaded the lad to go round and see his doctor. All right, Mr. Hancock. You can get dressed now. Doctor, tell me the truth. How bad is it? Don't spare me. I'd, I'd rather know. Doctors, man to man, how long have I got? Now, look, Mr. Hancock, I... Uh, uh, you don't have to break it to me gently. I'm a grown man. I, I understand these things. Just tell me what is wrong with me. You, you really want to know? Yes. Yeah. You've got flat feet. <laughs> flat feet? Oh, no, not that. Steady, Hancock. Chin up, lad, be brave. I'll enjoy myself in what little time I have left. That's what I'll do. I'll... I'll take all my money out of the bank. Be gay. Tragic, heartbroken clown that I am. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Flat feet's not serious. Of course not. <laughs> Isn't that all I've got wrong with me? That's all. I've given you a thorough examination, and I can find nothing organically wrong with you. Nothing? Are you sure? Positive. I've examined your heart, your liver, I've examined your head, and I assure you there's nothing there. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with you. Then have another look. I demand you find something wrong with me. I'm not paying seven and five a week for nothing. <laughs> Mr. Hancock, for the last time, I tell you there's nothing seriously wrong with you. Be brave. Face up to it. You're a fit man. Then how do you account for me turns? <laughs> <laughs> dizzy spells. I, I, I get breathless, you know. I, I really do. I go all over tiswas. <laughs> I've diagnosed all that. Yes? You're too fat. Thank you for being so tactful. <laughs> Listen, I've got a perfect figure. I am solid bone and muscle. I've told you I've examined your head. Let's face it. <laughs> now, hold on. Let's face it. You are grossly overweight. Rubbish. All right. Just step on the scales. There you are. What did I tell you? According to the weight chart, you should be nine feet, seven and a half inches tall. <laughs> yes. Now, the trouble is, you eat too much. He's going to diet immediately. In future, one meal a day only. How big? Two raw carrots and a plate of prunes. <laughs> Two raw carrots and a plate of prunes? That's right. And I'll see you in a month's time. Not if I stick to that diet, you won't. <laughs> and another thing, exercise is what you want. Strenuous exercise, as much as you can get. How about a fast game of chess? Yeah, no. <laughs> Running, jumping, an hour in the gym every day. Make a new man of you. Now, I'll run along. And remember what I told you? You've got nothing to worry about. There's absolutely nothing wrong with you. And the doctor said I haven't got very long to go. It's a miracle how I've managed to last this long. He said, I'm the bravest man who ever walked into his surgery. <laughs> but there's nothing he can do for me. I've just got to wait. Why, Tony, darling, I, I didn't realize it was so, so serious. Oh, well, that's the way things are. It's, it's always the good that go first. Pluck <laughs> another grape for me. I feel my strength there been. No. It's too late for that. Lay in bed all day. Don't move a muscle, he said. I mustn't exert myself. I've got to be waited on hand and foot. Pass another bunch of bananas. Tony, Tony, it just... Well, it just won't seem the same without you, I... Steady, steady, Maury, don't give way. Be brave, I'm not in too much pain. Yet. Come on, chin up, look. I'm smiling. Just the bravest person I've ever met. Well, there's nothing to be miserable about. <laughs> I may live for days. <laughs> Pass the chocolates. I'm healthy, I'm full of life. Uh, hiya, Moira, hiya, Tub. 
Say, uh, what's everybody looking so miserable about? This place looks like a mortuary. No, Bill. Not yet. <laughs> oh, come on, Tub. It's a beautiful afternoon. Come on, get up out of bed. No, I don't think I'd better. Not in my condition. Pass me a sausage. <laughs> Say, what gives? Bill. Bill, I think you ought to know. Tony won't be with us for very much longer. Is that right? Yes, I'm afraid so. I might go any minute now. I'll go and book your ticket. <laughs> you needn't look so pleased. Here's me laying here helpless. Any more meat pie left? <laughs> oh, thanks. Cut the crust off for me, Maura. Yes. As I was saying, I expected a bit more sympathy, Carla. Callous, that's what you are, Callous. Well, you look so healthy. Perhaps that's one of my symptoms. A rose always looks its prettiest just before it drops off. <laughs> All right, Rose, what's wrong with you? <laughs> what's wrong with me? Oh, yes, the name, yes. Fetitis flatulus. Never heard of it. Haven't you? There's a lot of it in the police box. <laughs> and it's serious, huh? Mm, yes. You come over all week and hungry. All you can do is lay in bed all day and stuff yourself. <laughs> then what are you worrying about? You've been doing that for years. I'm not going to argue about it. I'm a sick man. All right, Bill. I'll get it. Hello? Oh, Doctor. You want to speak to who? Tony? But that's impossible. He's much too weak to answer the phone. Where is he? Well, you should know. He's only doing what you told him. Yes. He's lying in bed eating. Carrots and prunes? <laughs> oh, no. Well, uh, meat pies, sausages, bananas, cream buns, and a... Doctor! He is not a lazy, fat slob. <laughs> he's, he's a very sick person. <laughs> Well, I'm very sorry to hear about your Aunt Fanny, but it's my Tony that I'm worried about. <laughs> I... I beg your pardon? There isn't. But he said... Yes, but he told me... Oh, that... Oh, I see. Nothing at all. Oh, I see. Thank you for telling me, Doctor. Yes, don't worry. I'll see he does. Yes, leave everything to me. Goodbye. turn the pages of my book. Get up. Eh? Hey? Get up. Up on those big fetitis flatterers of yours. Maura, I can't. I can't. I'm, I'm ill. I might not even reach the door. With my foot behind you, you will. <laughs> Do you know who I was talking to on the phone? Miss solicitor, undertaker, flower shop. But... Your doctor. Oh. Oh, yeah. Did my name crop up in the conversation? It did. If I was to tell you that man was the biggest liar I've ever met, you wouldn't believe me, would you? No. Then I'd better think of something else, wouldn't I? What did the quack say, Moira? He said there was nothing whatsoever wrong with Tony. Rubbish. You mean he's fit? He's not in any danger? He won't be going after all? Of course not. The doctor gave me his instructions. I quote, lock the larder up and work him like a horse. I refuse. I'm not pulling a milk van round the streets for nobody. <laughs> He means exercise. You've got to lose two and a half stone. Two and a half stone? Where can I use that from? You've got a couple of chins there. They could knock it up between them. <laughs> I'm not slimming. All right. If you won't carry out the doctor's instructions, I'll just have to take steps myself, that's all. What do you mean? First of all, I'll ring up the labor exchange and tell them that you are fit for work and to stop your unemployment money. Then I'll tell the National Assistance Board that you're not a married man with 15 children. <laughs> then there's the sick benefit, the hospital savings, the national yeah. insurance, and... All right, all right, that's enough. That's 40 quid a week gone already. Tell me, Lara. Well, what's it to be? All right, I'll do it. I'll start slimming. What do I have to do first? Put yourself under an expert, someone who specializes in getting people physically fit. Wait a minute, I know the very place. Where? Sid's gym. Not Sid James' gym. Yeah. I did it. <laughs> No. No, but Tub. No, I'm having nothing more to do with Sidney James. The man is a felon. But Tub. <laughs> when Sidney you know. gets to work on you, he'll take pounds off you. He always does. Bundles of them. <laughs> but this is different. This is a perfectly respectable class gymnasium. Anybody's allowed in, but you've got to wear a shirt. <laughs> All the big boxers and wrestlers get there. You'll be training with them. Look, I'm not going to Sid's gym. It won't do any good arguing. I am not going. That is final. I am definitely not going. Well, here we are, Sid's gym. 
right. All right. All right. So you persuaded me to come down here. Jolly good. Well done. Now get me out of this perishing sack. <laughs> come on. Let's go in. There you are. What a wonderful sight. Look at all those athletes. Everybody in this room at the peak of physical fitness. Look at that group over there. Those muscles, those shoulders, those thick, sturdy legs. In a month's time, you'll have a body like that, Tub. I sincerely hope not. That is the South Croydon ladies' wrestling team. <laughs> Bill? Where's Sydney? That's him in the turtleneck sweater. Who's the bloke he's talking to? Punchy McGurk, the heavyweight champion of Shepherd's Bush. He's Sydney's best boy. He's fighting for the British Championship next week. All right, now listen, Punchy, you've got to win this fight next week, see? I've got a fortune on it. First of all, let's go over the rules again. Good, clean fighting. No holding, biting, gouging, but no kicking. Now, if you stick to those rules, we've had it. <laughs> this is what you've got to do. Halfway through round two, you go into a clinch. Get close to the champ's hero, tell him his back's to the television camera. Then when he turns around and smile, kick him in the kidneys. <laughs> All right, now, good luck, and may the best man win. Hey, Sydney. Why, Billy? Billy the Cur. What are you doing here? I've got a client for you, Sid. Tony here has got to get some weight off. His doctor says he's too fat. Oh, let's have a look at him. Yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, no. Well, is that all is? Well, what do you advise? Melt him down. <laughs> you could work on him, Sydney. You could get him ship shape. Well, that depends. What kind of ship you got in mind? Are you sure you could do something with him, Mr. James? All right, I'll have a go. But it's going to cost you money. How much? Well, I usually charge ten nicker a course. But I've only got fifty quid to be uh, named. I can see that you're going to need exactly five courses. Ah, <laughs> uh, by the way, Mr. James, I, I haven't actually got any money with me. I, I'll pay you in pennies first thing on Monday morning. I can't wait till Monday. You will have to. I don't take the plate round till Sunday. All uh, right. See that weight bar? Pick it up. Mm. 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 Oh. Mm. Ha. 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 There. Well done. Now hold it there. I'll put the weights on the end. What do you think, Sid? Can you do anything for him, Mr. James? Well, it'll be a waste of time giving him exercises. You know the best thing for him? What? Box. You're right. I'll go and get one made. <laughs> No, I mean fighting. Put him in the ring. That'll get his weight down. Oh, no. No, no. I'm not letting Tony go into a boxing ring. He's got no idea. He'll be massacred. Why, he couldn't even punch his way out of a paper bag. <laughs> well, no. Not those big brown ones, no. <laughs> but those, those little ones they put sweets in. Ho, ho, ho. Three or four hefty thumps. I'm nearly through. <laughs> I've come in there. Ho, ho. Look, I don't want him to fight anybody. He just needs exercise. All he need do is some shadow boxing. What odds will you give me on the shadow? <laughs> I think Sidney's right. A bit of boxing will do top the world of good. But I think somebody ought to be in the ring with him just to give him a proper workout. Oh, you do, do you? Well, how about you coming in with me? Let's have a go at you. Well, there, a man. Well, you know, I'd love to, Tub, but... Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. my arms are playing up again. Oh! <laughs> Rheumatism. Yes. Well, they get all sort of stiff and I can't move them. You know how oh, it is. Ooh, yes, of course. Look, uh, they've seized up again. Yes, what's that? I can't even get my hands out of my pockets. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Happens every time we go into a pub, doesn't it? <laughs> all right, don't worry. I'll get one of the boys to spar with him. Oi, Ponchi! Here, wait a minute. Oh, no forehead there. He, he's the champion, isn't he? Yes, he's got nothing to do now. The sparring partners haven't turned up. Why not? He's still in hospital. Good night. <laughs> now, come back. Punchy won't hurt you. He's gentle as a lamb. Then why are his sparring partners in hospital? Well, it was their own fault. They hit him on the chin and broke their arms. Just a minute. <laughs> Punchy! Hello. Mr. Hancock here wants you to put the gloves on with him. A pleasure. Me punchy bag's busty. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think I'll bother. I'll get me exercise somewhere else. <laughs> Ta-ta. I'll go home and take me goldfish out for a run. Hello. <laughs> I tell you, you got nothing to worry about. Get those gloves on and get in that ring. No, I don't want to. Ah, you're yellow. Hey, did you hear that, Tub? He said you're yellow. Yes. Observant, isn't he? <laughs> James, we've got to stop this. Tony doesn't stand a chance. Look, lady, he came here to be reduced, didn't he? Yes, but not to pulp. <laughs> Relax, lady. Come on, now, let's get started. Remember, Hancock, when he comes towards you, keep moving. I will. If you hear a couple of bangs, don't worry. It's me going through the sound barrier. <laughs> All right, come on, now, let's have it. Quiet, everybody. 
Seconds out. Bill. Bill. I can't watch it. Poor Tony. That man will murder him. Bill. Bill. What's happening? Is he still alive? I don't know. I can't watch it either. Well, I guess that's it. All over. Send for the ambulance. Oh, Bill. Bill, I can't bear to look. Me neither. Oh, oh, Bill. Oh, now, easy, easy, baby. Don't cry. Be brave. Tony would have wished it that way. Well, come on. Let's go over and pick up the pieces. All right. Look, what's going on over there? The ring's crowded with people. Who are they? Newspaper reporters looking for a story, probably asking the champ for all the gory details. I just want to ask one more question for my reader. That punch you knocked him out with, what do you call it? I don't know. I just lashed out and thumped him one. Extra, extra, read all about it. Unknown boxer knocks out champion. New white oak, Marciano goes into hiding. Extra! Stenhouse Muir, four. Cotton Beef, two. And finally, St. Johnston, three. Queen's Park, one. Cricket results. MCC touring team two all out and three for nine wickets. <laughs> Australia, 993 for one declared. <laughs> Match draw. <laughs> Boxing. Punchy McGurk, the leading contender for the British heavyweight title, is still unconscious after being sensationally knocked out during training by two-ton Tony Hancock, <laughs> the unknown boy from Birmingham. It's reported that if Punchy McGurk doesn't come up for his fight with the reigning British champion at the White City tomorrow night, his manager, Mr. Sidney James, will forfeit the purse of £5,000. Unless, of course, Mr. James can find a substitute to take Punchy McGurk's place. Marbles. Last night in a Fleet Street gutter... Yeah, switch it off. See what you've done now, Hancock? I'll never get Punchy fit by tomorrow night. 5,000 liquor down the drain. But it wasn't my fault. I couldn't help knocking him out. I'm still trying to figure out how you knocked him out. He didn't. He ran into his stomach, bounced off, and hit the back of his head on a post. <laughs> So that's how it was done. Yes, and it's going to cost me 5,000 nickers. Unless we can find a substitute. Do me a favor. The heavyweight champion of Great Britain. Who'd be stupid enough to go in a ring with him? Who'd be stupid enough to risk his life fighting a bruiser like that? Who'd be stupid enough to... Hey, stupid. Not... <laughs> I'm not doing it. I'm finished with boxing. Every time I get in that ring, I see red. Why? It happens to be the color of my blood. <laughs> Look, I guarantee you won't get a... This is the idea. We put you in to take Punchy's place. They're all calling you the new wonder boy anyway. So I save my 5,000 nickel, right? I go out and get all the money I can lay hands on and put it on the other bloke. Then you lay down in the second round. Tony, boy, we can't go wrong. You take a dive, I clean up, and you get the loser's purse money. 600 pounds. No, I won't let him do it. Look, Moira, think what he could buy you with that 600 quid. Fur coat, expensive dresses, perfume, jewelry, full gear. That line of talk won't get you anywhere. Maura thinks more of me than knickknacks like that. You won't persuade her that way, will he, Maura? Maura, will he? <laughs> Maura. Keep still. How can I tie your gloves on if you keep moving about? <laughs> well, Tony, your fight's next on the program. How are you feeling? Terrible. I've just seen the champion. He's a great big bloke. I had to stand on a chair to read the name on his dressing gown. <laughs> so don't, don't worry about it too much. I know you can beat him. You know you can beat him. Good. Pop next door and tell him he might call it off. <laughs> You'll be all right. Come on. Let me help you to get ready. I'll bandage your hands up. Save some of it. We might need it. <laughs> hey, Chubb, there's a full house out there. Everybody's come to see you. Jack Solomons is sitting in the fifth row. Good, I might drop in on him. <laughs> Come on, Tony. Let me help you on with your gloves. Oh, all right. Pass them over. <coughs> oh, you've dropped them. Say, what have you got in those gloves? Oh, just a few trinkets to bring me luck. <laughs> Empty them out. Well, 
Well, how do you like that? Four horseshoes, a glass rabbit to put a cast iron clover and a big lump of coal. <laughs> I'm just a superstitious old fool. Put them back. Let's see if I've got everything. Boots, socks, gloves, pajamas, toothbrush, suitcase. Good night. Come back. Tony, Tony, don't worry, darling. You'll be all right. I'll be thinking of you. When you're out there in that ring, I'll be out there with you. So will I. Good. Between the three of us, we should be able to give him a right fashion. Now, are you all set, Tub? I think so. Gum shield, gloves, trunks, braces. Braces? With boxing trunks? Certainly. Nobody's hitting me below the belt. <laughs> Hello, Tony boy. Everything all right? Oh, yes, I think so. Good. Fight starts in two minutes. Come on, I'll show you where to go for the way in. Never mind that. Show me where to go for the way out. You're not going anywhere. You stay here. I stand to win a fortune tonight. Now listen, here's your instructions. As soon as the bell goes, you walk to the middle of the ring. And lay down? No. Oh. <laughs> You've got to last the first round. It might look fishy otherwise. Now the best thing you can do for the first round is back pedal. Pardon? Back pedal. All round the ring. Oh, we're on bikes. We're <laughs> not on bikes. There's no need to shout. I didn't know. I wish I hadn't come. Now, don't forget, you take your dive in the second or third round, but whatever you do, don't lay down before he hits you. It don't look right. <laughs> now, now, Billy and me will be in your corner. Good. If I want anything, I'll just scream, shall I? Right. Now, get out there and perform as all your life depends on it, because believe me, it does. <laughs> Isn't it marvelous? I only wanted to lose a bit of weight. Good luck, Tony, darling. Give me a big kiss before you go. <laughs> Thank you. Can I have my gum shield back now? <laughs> All right, come on. I'm waiting for you. Good luck, Tub. Milo, the ladies and gentlemen. Eight to the 15 round contest. Three minutes each round. All the heavyweight championship of Great Britain. <laughs> Between the elder. Gone muscles of Bennett Sea. <laughs> and, and the challenger. Two tan Terry Echo of Bandigan. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Good night. I must go. I, I just remembered I, I got a better be grandmother. Your grandmother's not dead. I know it is not going to be a struggle. <laughs> Tony, you can't disappoint your fans now. Besides, it's being broadcast. You'll have to go through with it. I'm scared. Let me teeth are chattering. Well, take them out and put them in a water bucket. <laughs> he had them. They're still at it. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late now. The fight's just going to start. Well, good evening, everybody. This is Paul Carpenter speaking to you from the White City Stadium, where we're just about to witness the fight for the heavyweight championship of Great Britain. The announcements have been made, and the referee has called the two fighters into the center of the ring. The referee's resting his hand on Hancock's shoulder, and Hancock's down. <laughs> now, that's all right. He's recovered. They're back in their corners. And there goes the bell for round one. Straight away, the champion opens up a straight left, another left, a right cross, a left hook, another left, another left. Oh, yes, I thought this would happen. The referee is telling Hancock to come out from under his stool. <laughs> now the champion is really letting fly. A right, a left, another left, another right. Ooh, a vicious left there. And now Hancock's found an opening between the ropes. He's halfway up the aisle. He's reached the exit. They've got him. They're bringing him back. He's in the ring again, and straight away, a left to Hancock's jaw, and Hancock's down. He's up, he's down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Get your foot off me, Brayson! <laughs> We'd better sling the towel in quickly. Why? His pants are falling down. What a fight this is. Six foot nine versus five foot six, and now Hancock is fighting back. He throws a left, a right, another left, another right, a left, a right, and another left, another right, and yes, the champion's left knee is definitely showing signs of punishment. <laughs> And there goes the bell for the end of round one. Come in, Barry. He can come in here if he likes. <laughs> oh, where's Miss Stu? Well done, Tony boy. How are you feeling? I'm worried. He, he's found me weak spot. Has he where? All over. <laughs> Tony, Tony, darling, you were wonderful. Why you could even beat him? The way you keep bashing his gloves with your nose has got him worried. 
Now, now, don't forget, Hancock. You lie down in the next round. It'll be a pleasure. And so we come to round two, and straight away the champion cuts loose. The left to Hancock's head. The right to Hancock's head. The left to Hancock's head. How can Hancock stand this terrific punishment? Tony, take that bucket off your head. <laughs> now the two boys are in the middle of the ring. They've gone into a clinch. Of course, this isn't really my game, you know. I didn't think it was. Well, it's not really. You could tell... <laughs> I mean, you spotted it straight away. I, mean, I saw you. No, uh, I saw you. I'm a wrestler, really. I thought you were. You could tell by my build. Yeah. Uh, I wrestled that uh, Carnilla once. Did you? Nice fellow. <laughs> you liked him, a real gent at top he was. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, you. I think you was there. You were there at the time. <laughs> anyway, we were in the lock, and he grabbed hold of my leg, and he twisted. I said, here, you can't do that, I said. You can see I meant it, because I'm like that when I'm roused. Oh, I'm no. a funny bloke. <laughs> Charlie will tell you, you know, Charlie. Well, he's through. seen me go, I can tell you. Anyway, I said to this Carnilla... Pack it up, I said. Yeah. His muscles nearly jumped out of his skin. They did, yeah. They did. Anyway, he raised himself up on one elbow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he looked at me just yeah. like I'm looking at you. Now, this minute, yes. Yeah, Admiration on his face. <laughs> oh, yeah. Then he smiled at me, uh -huh. just like you are now. Yeah. He reached out. Yeah. He took hold of me hand. Yeah. And he did. What? He broke me arm. <laughs> And now the referee has pulled them apart and the champion throws a terrific right hand into Hancock's stomach. Now he's struggling to get it out. And there's a bit of a brawl going on in the champ's down. Yes, he's down. The referee's counting. Seven, eight, nine, out. It's all over. The new heavyweight champion of Great Britain, two-ton Tony Hancock. Bill! Bill, he's done it. He's beaten him. Good boy, Tom. All right. This is fantastic. Hancock looked all over a beaten man. I don't quite know what happened, but he must have pulled something out from somewhere because the champ is out cold. And over now to Hancock's corner, his manager, Sid James, is walking over to congratulate him. You stupid, fat, lumbering clock. <laughs> I'm ruined. I thought I told you to lie down. I tried to lie down. I was just falling backwards when his glove got caught in my braces. What happened, Tony? I sprang back and clutched him with my head. And now you're the champ. A few more fights and we'll all be rich. Tiana, where's the Charles, Jack Cardner? We can fight them all, can't you, Tub? No, I'm not fighting any more of those big boys. But, Tub, you can't do this to me. I'm the best friend money can buy. Now, listen, you and Maura put me on a diet, remember? I'm supposed to be getting me weight down. I'm too light for the heavyweight. I, I've already decided who my next opponent's going to be. Who? Gordon Richards. <laughs> Maura, I'll have me prunes and carrots in the dressing room, please. That was Hancock's Half Hour, featuring the lad himself with Moira Lister, Bill Kerr, Sidney James, and this week's special guest, Paul Carpenter and Kenneth Williams. Incidental music was composed by Wallace Stott and recorded by the BBC Augmented Review Orchestra, conducted by Harry Rabinowitz. The script was written by Ray Galton and Alan Simpson, and the program which was recorded was produced by Dennis Main Wilson.